was also the only EV in this year's test. We would love to tell you how it compared with the pricier and glissier Tesla Model S, but despite our repeated requests, Tesla refused to supply us with a car and thereby failed to defend its 10 best berth. We've since changed our cologne and started to chew mints. The Bolt is inexpensive but still a pricier proposition than conventional internal combustion rivals, arriving at its $29,995 price tag only after the $7,500 Federal Lev tax credit gets factored in. Design is where our opinions on the Bolt divided. The Korean pen styling had both fans and haters, but the most asked question was why GM chose to launch its brave new electric architecture in the guise of a Jeep hatchback rather than one of those crossovers people are lining up to buy. The cabin is practical and spacious enough, although we found the roof flying too low in back. The interior materials feel tough and durable but not upmarket. Inside, it feels closer to $20,000 than $30,000, but it's easy to do the math on that one. GM has disclosed that it's paying LG $145 per kWh for battery cells, meaning the 60 kWh lump is responsible for $8,700 of the car's cost. And that's before you consider the price of the motor, the transaxle, the wiring, and the cooling system. The Bolt is a car that inspires respect rather than poetry. Its presence here is justified on the strength of its engineering rather than its looks or performance numbers. It advances the EV game further than anything since the launch of the Model S. Like every pure electric vehicle, it requires compromise. You could fly from LA to Europe in less time than it takes to replenish the battery pack from empty using a household 110 volt socket. Yet the Bolt is irrefutably a landmark car, as sensible as you'd expect an electron-powered Chevrolet to be, and welcome proof that established automakers can indeed make class-leading electric vehicles.